the only thing I'm more tired of than bad JavaScript is worse TypeScript. And honestly, seeing some of the TypeScript y'all have shown me, I understand why you don't think you like it. If you're writing hundreds of type definitions all over your code base and asserting inputs and outputs everywhere for everything you do, then most of what you're writing is TypeScript. It's not functionality. If you feel like TypeScript is more types and less code that actually matters, you're almost certainly using TypeScript wrong. And sadly, I think a lot of y'all are. So this is going to be a little rant about why you might be using TypeScript wrong and how to use it a bit better. We're talking about type inference versus explicit typing. So a common problem I see in the TypeScript world and with people using TypeScript wrong is the desire to make a bunch of files like you have a folder source slash user, and in there you have source slash user like index, source slash user slash component, source slash user slash API, source slash user slash types dot ts, maybe even d dot ts. And then you go and you put each of these things in each of these sections. You have the index that exports everything, the component that defines the UI, the API, which is the calls you make, and the types where all the types that these things use are. I hate everything about this. This is bad. Don't do this. This is why you hate TypeScript. You're using it wrong. You're architecting things like we're still in fucking Java land. Like it's like 2004. Every part of your code doesn't need a file. You're solving problems. You're not architecting MVC anymore. You're, you're trying to make a pattern for the sake of it when you do this. And it's very common that I see this. So as a component, should probably be TSX. So this is common and also really bad. Probably do it. Instead, you have a source slash things or whatever, user.tsx or even source slash user index TSX. I don't care. I really don't care. I think people care too much about file names. But what's more important is they are breaking things up for the sake of it. That's a little more readable. So it, you might have a source user TSX. Uh, I'm going to rename this file to .tsx so that the compiler doesn't bitch at me when I do TSX code in it. So in here, we'll start with what this is, is, which is the thing you want to render. Const user component. And here's probably where I, I might do some TypeScript. We won't even initially. We'll just do empty. Return div user. Cool. Now we're exporting this component, user component. Cool. So we have our user component. We probably want to get some data for this component. So let's do that. Export, or we want to export it. Const use user data equals, we'll React query it. Uh, use query. I'll just go npm install so we can do this fully type safe. Now it should see. Cool. Use query. We'll give this user query. I think they require an array for this now. Might be the alpha, but I'll get ahead of that. And then this return fetch API user.json or async. I don't need to do that. You can just return the promise. I forgot about that. Good enough for me. Cool. So now we uh, dot, yeah, JSON should exist. There we go. Cool. So now we have our thing that fetches the user data. But you'll notice we probably need an input. We probably need an ID right here. So here is where we start doing TypeScript. Up until this point, no TypeScript has been written. We have just written JavaScript. But in order to use this, we need to start doing some TypeScript. It's going to put us above here because technically this happens. And we're going to use this hook in here. So where do we have to add TypeScript for this to work? The first thing is we need an input. So we need like user ID here for this fetch. 
So user ID, string. We have now defined our first TypeScript. It is right here, colon string, which makes sure now when we try to use user data that we give it a string. So now we can go use this here. Well, not that way. Uh, const data equals use user data. And we didn't pass it something because it, and it needs a string. Where are we going to get that string? We're probably going to get it from, uh, we're probably going to get this uh, data from whatever mounts this component. We have a couple places we can put that. I am still a fan of React.fc. I know that uh, not a lot of people are nowadays. I think it's fine. No, I thought I turned off Emmet forever. Uh, .fc. And this user ID string. And now we know here we have user ID. And we could pass that here. Now, in order for somebody to use this component, they have to pass a user ID. And then that same user ID with the same type gets passed down to here. We wrote two types, and I'll agree. It's a little annoying we had to put that in two places. But even without that, we would still have to put this part in two places. Well, technically, we have it here, too. How bad is this? Eh. But here is the important part now, though. Data comes back as any because we're not typing this here. So here is where before what, you, what we see with the types file happens. Somebody would go in that types file and make a really big type user API response equals. And we're still going to kind of want to do this here. And this will have like an ID string, name string, uh, email string. And we will put here as this. And now when I hover over data here, we get back user API response or undefined. This is inference. We didn't have to put here data colon user API response. We didn't have to put this in a whole bunch of places. Putting this here is fine because that is what it's going to be. But the important detail here is that the use query is returning something that we now know the type of. We're lying kind of about it, but we're pretty certain we know the type of this here. And as such, we can infer from here to here that this type is correct. Inference is the process of taking a type that exists in one place and effectively currying it to another place just by having it exist in one place as you consume it. So rather than redefining the type, every layer that you have that data, you define it in one place and then access it further and further away. But as long as you're not breaking that contract by binding it some other way or leaving TypeScript, it is like much more correct. Because now if I change this in one place, if I change, let's say I'm rendering, uh, I'll say if, if no data return div loading, it might be no data because of an error or some other thing. Like you should put a loadings check and an error check too, but we're going to do the simple solution and we'll do that instead. Cool. Now we're returning data.name. Let's say we stop getting name here. That dies. If we were to, instead of returning this promise here, return ID, hello, name, world. This passes because it's inferring off of the thing we defined here. That's the other part of inference. Inference doesn't have to come from a type that you defined. Inference can come from a type that exists because of the thing that exists. So like if I do const x equals four, TypeScript can infer that x is four. So when I use x in here, it still knows that x is a number and that number is four specifically because it's bound once as a constant. Here, it knows that ID is a string and name is a string because that's what we gave it here. So when I hover here, we see ID and name are string and you don't have to do any type bindings or anything else here. So how do we combine these things and have deeper inference? We could do or TRPC. We'll go on that rant in a minute, but we're going to use one part of TRPC first. We're going to use one of my favorite parts, Zod. So pmpm install, I think it just install Zod. Cool. So now we have Zod. For those that don't know, Zod is a validator, which means that it is used to... 
validate that data is in the shape that you expect it to be in. The general goal is you pass it an object that has things like strings, numbers, whatever, and then validate that like the numbers aren't too big or too small, that the strings are within your expected length, those types of things. Uh, find a quick example here. My schema is z.string. You parse tuna. This throws an error because 12 is not a string. It's a really nice way to validate at runtime that something is the shape you expect. The other cool thing Zod does is inference. So let's say we want to be sure that the API response we got here is the correct shape. Const uh, user, I'll do our case, user validator equals z.object. And this will have an ID, which is a z.string that's min five characters dot max 10. And email is z.string.email name is z.string. And I can even say that this is dot optional. So sure, cool. Oh, I have to make that a function call. Now let's use this in here. Const res equals that. So now we have this JSON blob response. As long as it is valid JSON, we have that. We need to do something with it though. Oh, copilot. I think it's dot parse. Yeah, cool. And now if this doesn't match the expectations here, it throws an error. And if it does, then we get back data that has the correct type definition based on what we put in here. There's no type defining here at all. There is no type def. I'll just go delete this because it's not being used anymore. There is no type definition in this file right now. And this is fully type safe. Joy has a terrible type story. It's Joy, Yup, and Zod all do the same thing in runtime, but Zod has the best type safe in TypeScript story by far, and some of the best syntax for doing this too. Like we, we are conforming on Zod as our validator, like as an industry right now. If you're not using it, you should have a good reason for not using it. And if you do have a good reason, tell me about it so we can get it fixed in Zod. The creator column is really cool, and Zod is dope. The other thing you could do, like let's say we want to consume this type somewhere else without having to consume here. Zod has a really dope inference feature built in. Type user type equals z dot inf auto completed with copilot. Z dot infer lets you pass the type of a validator. And here is email string or undefined because it's optional ID string name string. Magic. So here we have an API that we might not own a validator to guarantee the data comes back in the right shape and throw a specific error if it doesn't and a type safe result that we can now safely consume here. Like, let's say I change this from name to username that throws an error because the type here is defined here. When we parse the result gets inferred to this data and then that comes through here too. That is what inference is. Inference is when the types aren't a thing you're writing the types are the thing that happens because of some other source of truth that is the original type. In this case, that source of truth is the validator, and the validator carries the type all the way up. How do you catch the error? Data? Error. If error, return div. Oh no, there was an error. What you can also do is that mad? No, oh, because this might not be. We don't know the type of this. It's unknown. Yeah, we don't know the error type. You could put if you know it's going to be a mess or something. You could put it there. You also have the ability in uh, React Query, you can pass options. So we can have on error, error, console dot error. Oh no, something went wrong. Error. And now when an error happens, this will get hit. And also in the response from React Query, you have an error object that gets returned if you hit an error and data will stay undefined. Does this help clarify the original question of what it, what is type inference and give a better idea of why type inference is so powerful? Thank you all so much for subscribing. We just broke 10,000 subs. 
That said, less than half of you are subscribed, so make sure you hit that red button below if you haven't already, like the video and share it with some friends. Also, please join our Discord. We take questions and have fun conversations every day all about topics just like what you're hearing about here. I think there's a lot to learn and there's some really cool stuff that you can get out of here too. If you're using TypeScript wrong or you have any friends or coworkers who are using TypeScript wrong, please send them this video. If you are that coworker and somebody sent you this video, don't hold them too accountable. Don't be too mad at them for it. They're just trying to help. Please stop using TypeScript wrong. I really hope this rant helps. Thank you again. Peace out.